There have been plenty of accurate depictions of historical characters in video games, such as Command and Conquer's faithful rendering of Soviet Premier Anatoly Chudenko. I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. Space! Sadly, that's not always the case, as we can see from these famous historic characters from years past and their wildly inaccurate representations in modern-day video games. We're lucky Napoleon isn't here to see this. Burn it. In the meantime, do beware of spoilers for the following games. What more? It's up to you to find out. Keep fighting, Dante. Medieval poet Dante Alighieri crafted the Divine Comedy, one of the greatest works in world literature that charts the author's journey through the nine circles of hell. And because Dante wrote it in the Tuscan language as opposed to elitist hoity-toity Latin, he basically established that as the language of Italy. Uh, but then I've been busy today too. Space! In 2010's Dante's Inferno, however, top EA historians have their own vision for Dante, which is less of a poet and philosopher, more of a Templar knight who uses magic attacks to double kill Hellions and sewing skills to depict all his sins on his chest in a cross shaped tapestry. <laughs> <laughs> How hard can it be? I've started, so I'll finish. We expect the real Dante wouldn't have much patience with his portrayal as a budget Kratos, or how his guide through paradise, Beatrice, is now a sad ghost made of mist and toplessness. I told him you would come for me. That said, Dante did have the patience to spend eight years handwriting 14,000 lines of epic poetry. So you never know, I didn't even have the patience for the DLC in which Dante receives a white three-piece disco suit. Really? Man, history is full of surprises. Nicola, how fares your friend Edison these days? Thomas and I are not on speaking terms. The man is an idiot. If you thought the console wars were rough, spare a thought for Serbian-American inventor Nikola Tesla, best remembered for the current wars. In said wars, Tesla backed the way sexier alternating current method of delivering electricity against fusty old direct current championed by Edison. This device allows you to convert between Edison's inefficient direct current and my superior alternating current. Quite handy for overloading and incapacitating certain electrical systems. He also invented an electric railgun for shooting werewolves. On a wait. No, I'm just hearing that, no, he definitely didn't. But try telling that to the order 1886. In real life, by the year 1886, Tesla had already struck out for the US, but in the order's alternate timeline, he's stuck in the gloomy, lycanthropy, vampire tropolis of London. Do be careful. On the plus side, his experiments have gone really well, since instead of faffing around with light bulbs and coils, he's cooked up the TS-21 arc induction lance. <laughs> Suck it, Edison. Alternating current sucks. Direct till I die. Woo! Direct current. Come on, man. The war is over. You're over. To be fair, the real Tesla had a flair for the dramatic, saying things like, every living being is an engine geared to the wheelwork of the universe, or one must be sane to think clearly, but one can think deeply and be quite insane. So you never know, it could be that werewolves, Arthurian legend and laser weapons were all in a day's work in the secret forgotten history of Nikola Tesla. Plus he did invent that cool electric car. I told you he didn't invent that! Being Emperor of Rome is a hard job. It's no wonder that sometimes they go a bit, you know, completely mad with power. Kill it! Kill it! Kill it! Power is addictive, I guess. Just ask my new boss. Ellen, recycling won't take this. I needed to eat this keyboard. Thanks. Few emperors have had as bad a rep as Nero, ruler from 54 to 68 AD, who, apart from having his mum executed and probably poisoning his brother, is rumoured to have set fire to his own city so he could build a massive palace on the smouldering ruins. Still, we never got to hear Nero's side. 
Maybe it was going to be a really good palace. However, even someone as used to being slandered as Nero would still balk at his representation in Rise, Son of Rome. In the game, Nero is being used by a wind god bent on destroying Rome, but even with heavenly help, he is, by the end of the game, begging for hero Marius to give him his dagger so he can die with a bit of blooming dignity. Hand me your dagger, General. Then I can at least die as an emperor, even if I never lived as one. Okay, Nero, I'll give you the dagger, but you better not scamper off and shank me with it later. He's here to kill me! Protect me now! N Nero? Marius, watch out! Ah, oh, damn it, Nero. While the real Nero is said to have been the first Roman emperor to kill himself, in Rise, his death is more ironic, since he is killed by a massive statue of himself. Hmm, <laughs> that's how I want to go. In ancient Rome, having wronged a lot of people. If he comes to think that the world he's in on the other side is the true reality, then... Uh... Then, it's possible he may never return to our reality. Hmm. Frederick Chopin had a mind unlike any other. This piano genius was creating original compositions by age seven, before making his permanent mark on the world through his haunting, technically spectacular music. Chopin's incredible life was cut tragically short though when he died of tuberculosis aged just 39. What would have been going through Chopin's mind in those final moments? Probably something like this. Tear it apart! Tear apart this entire pathetic world! Japanese RPG Eternal Sonata takes place entirely within the mind of a dying Chopin, who uses his final moments to weave a solipsistic tale of magic, mining, and massive outfits. Truly only in his dreams could Chopin possess so sweet a hat. We'll see if I'm truly such a weak human being. In-game Chopin travels the world with his mates, uncovering the dastardly plans of Count Waltz, a tax-happy chap with a strong boot game. Okay, it doesn't make loads of sense, but Eternal Sonata is at least made with a lot of love for Chopin and his music even going so far as to stop the game to give you edutaining history lessons. I'd like to see some of the other games on this list try that. Albert Einstein is history's most iconic scientist, moving humanity forward with such smash hits as the theory of relativity, crucial work on photons, and the co-invention of an awesome fridge with no moving parts. But like I say, I've been busy today too. Space. But apparently that wasn't enough for the makers of Command & Conquer Red Alert, who decided that Einstein should also travel back in time and kill Hitler. Yes, in Red Alert, everyone's favourite frizzy-haired giganto brain kicks off the plot by jumping back through time to eliminate Adolf Hitler, triggering an alternate timeline in which Allied forces must battle a super-powered Soviet army for control of Europe. As a lifelong pacifist, Einstein may have been a bit less willing to wade in and start messing with 20th century history than depicted here, especially as in-game Einie admits he has no real idea of the consequences of his time hop. Sooner or later... Time will tell. I prefer Fridge Einstein. I should think you'd need to find the foreman. But how you'd convince him to give you the reports? Perhaps if they think the factory's on fire, you might bluff your way past. All of the games on this list are guilty of bending the truth a little, but none of them have taken quite as many liberties with historical figures as the Assassin's Creed series. If they're not outed as secret Templars in the game lore, they're on screen acting very out of character. For instance, Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli did not help charming assassins sneak into Buckingham Palace, Alexander Graham Bell did not attach a grappling hook to any kind of gauntlet, let alone one with a hidden blade, and Dickens did not dispatch murderers to debunk supernatural crimes. Sounds absolutely ridiculous. Why not? It does sound intriguing. Splendid.
I have your first case. Plus, we all know from the musical that first President Washington's right-hand man was Hamilton, not somber stabaholic Connor. Still, it must be nice, it must be nice to have Washington on your side. What, no Hamilton fans in tonight? Phew, tough crowd. Elsewhere, something tells us French Super Commander Napoleon would not enjoy hearing himself portrayed with a British accent. You certainly don't look like a blood-crazed revolutionary. The hood is a bit sinister, though, if you don't mind my saying. And that's not to mention the Ezio series, with Da Vinci being portrayed as an eccentric who invented the worst tank ever conceived. Oh, wait, um, that one's pretty accurate, actually. So those are the historic characters we think would be seriously displeased with their video game portrayals. But can you think of any more? If you can, then well done you. Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you want to watch something else, then there should be two other videos appearing sort of roughly around here. I'm summoning them magically with my hands. Anyway, subscribe, like, and stay tuned.